again live for another publishing empowerment interview i am live via facebook as well as periscope so i want to welcome all of you all who are going to be joining in and listening to the broadcast on tonight we have a wonderful interview in store uh, we have an awesome writer that we're going to be talking to and i'm sure you're going to receive a lot of publishing empowerment so i want you to just sit tight and hold on as we have a commercial break we'll be right back and we're going to get this show started So here we are once again, and thank you so much for joining us. It's good to see we got some folks on already. Good to see you, Mary Roberts. Welcome. Thank you for being on. Hello, Miss Pam Vantree, sending us some love. Hello there, Pamela. Thank you for being on. Mary Roberts says she just can't wait. And you can't hear anything, Tashonda. Well, I wonder what that's all about. Y'all let me know if you're having a problem hearing on tonight. We want to go ahead and make sure that you can hear every single thing we're going to be talking about because we know that Brenda, who is on with us on tonight, we're going to have her come on in just a moment. Brenda Wells has some wonderful things I'm sure to share with you because I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed her blog writings that she has blessed us with. So we are look like let me see i can't hear it sharia matthew says that she can't hear it so is there anybody who can hear us on tonight we were just talking about these technology issues <laughs> before i bring brenda on hello there periscope kalisa said come back go out and come back in kalisa can you hear us let me know if you can hear us that would be a wonderful thing Okay, great, Brenda. I got your message there. Can anybody hear us? Mary, can you hear us now? Okay, Sonia says she can hear us. So that's wonderful. So for those of you all who can't, maybe it's something going on in your end. Why don't you go ahead and go out and come back in? Kalisa says she can hear us. So we're good to go. Listen, this is Pastor Kisha Coleman. I am your book publishing coach and self-publishing servicer. And I am so glad to once again present this empowerment night, this publishing empowerment night. And so we've started this back so that we can encourage those of you all who are aspiring authors and those of you all who want to write, but you just haven't quite developed the discipline to write. Well, that's what these publishing empowerments are all about. And we have a wonderful woman of God who is going to be speaking with us on tonight. And I had the pleasure of meeting her uh, just a couple of months ago as she became one of our blog writers for Kishno's Publishing. And if you all have been checking out the blogs, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are definitely amazing messages coming from amazing women. So we're glad to have one of those women with us on tonight. And so she's going to be sharing a little bit about her writing process and just the experience that she's having uh, writing the blogs with Kish Knows. And I believe this is going to be a lot of motivation for some of you all who are kind of sitting on the fence and you're saying one day you're going to start writing, one day you're going to publish something, but you just haven't been able to do it yet. Well, I believe this is going to be the fuel that you need to keep your fire going or get it stirred even more. How about that? So listen, without any further ado, I want to go ahead and bring her on. We want to just uh, say hello and a welcome, welcome to Miss Brenda Wells. How you doing? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. And you look fabulous, as I already told you earlier. Yes, well. I'm so glad to have you on here. I love the picture in the background. So everything looks like it's all good. So listen, Brenda, first of all, we want you to tell us a little bit about you. Tell us where you're from. Give us a little backstory about your family and 
we'll get 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 it going by just starting off right there. Okay, I'm Brenda Wells. Um, I am the sixth child of eight. Well, maybe the fifth child of eight. Um, <laughs> five girls, three boys. I have two sons, two granddaughters. Um, I'm from Beaumont, Texas. I am currently um, employed as a credit bureau administrator for Khan's corporate office. Um, I love to be with my family. I'm big on family. Um, love spending time with my grandkids, things of that sort. I'm just happy to be here at this point in my life, in this season of my life. Amen. Well, wonderful. So yes, Boma, Texas, that's one of our favorite areas to uh, visit. My husband and I actually visit Texas about twice a year. We've been doing that for the last I want to say almost 15 years. So we oh. have not really visited maybe in the last year because mm -hmm. we've had so many things on our plate. But we've been to Beaumont and there are actually some churches that my husband is really strongly affiliated uh, with there. And he uh, often preaches in Beaumont. So we definitely have some some uh, folks oh. down there that we really love and appreciate. Wonderful. Yes, yes. So listen, let's go ahead and let's talk about some things as it relates to publishing. Now, before we do, I want to give you all some shout outs. I see you getting on on Periscope. I appreciate you all. And if you have any questions a little later, we want to make sure we get your questions. I'm going to give you some love, Periscope. And even though you can't see the video, you can hear what's going on. And we're going to make sure we pay as much attention to you as possible. And I want to go ahead and thank some of you all who've gotten on that we have not been able to uh, just welcome to our broadcast on tonight. Kalisa, thank you. Sonia, it's good to see you. That's one of our blog writers. We're so glad to have her with us. Natalie Green, that's another one of our blog writer she's here with us and so sharia is having some problems here you all she can't hear me but i believe that most most of the people can so maybe sharia if there's someone who's near you who can kind of help you with your facebook page i think it might be something on your end okay so but we're so happy to uh, see darlene richard that's another one of our blog writers she's on tonight and we see kita Hines. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of you all who are on. So let's go ahead and get into some of this questioning here. Let's talk about the writing process. So now, how new is this to you, Brenda? Is this uh, the whole writing the blogs and really having your work published where other people can kind of see it out there online? Is that something new to you? Tell us a little bit about your experience with writing. Yes, um, blog writing is new for me. Um, writing in the sense is not new for me. I actually um, started writing um, in 2005. Um, my first book I wrote was called um, Faith, Hope, and Love, but I never did anything with it. I just, I, I just put down the writing and everything. So it wasn't until seven years later that the spirit actually gave me an unction to begin to pick the writing back up again and start back writing. So, but blog writing is different because I never um, had to just be able to write in a certain amount of words to got to cram everything in in, in a certain amount of words. And so, um, blog writing is different, but writing is a passion for me. That's wonderful. So tell us a little bit more about the book. So did you ever publish it? If not, why did you? If you did, what happened after that? I never published the book. I actually wrote it when um, right before Hurricane Rita came. And so when Hurricane Rita came, I actually lost the book. So I, I never had a chance to publish the book at that time. Oh, wow. So, you know, there's there's some double that's coming for you. <laughs> yes. Double that's in store for you, right? Yes. So now the book was entitled Faith, Hope, and Love. You know, a lot of times what I've found out is when uh, there's an author, there's someone who writes, there's a particular genre or even a particular theme that they kind of flow out of. Would you say that's kind of the subject matter that you like to mostly write about, faith, hope, and love? Or what is one of your favorite subjects? Faith. Um, is my favorite subject to write on. Um, and I think it comes from the place in my life that I live and walk out of from faith. Um, everything 
that happens in my life, everything that has happened in my life has been done by faith, through faith in God. And so um, faith, yes, that's my favorite topic to write on. And I also understand that love. Without love, you'll never be able to draw others. And so I, I understand that love is one of the main keys. Jesus had love and compassion. And so you, 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 some people will have the compassion, but then they won't have the love. Some people will have the love, but then not the compassion. And so I believe you have to have both together in order to draw people. So I like to kind of write from, from both of those aspects. And of course, hope. Everything that you do in life, you have to have hope for. Um, you can't just say, I'm going to sit in this chair, but not hope and believe that the chair is going to hold you. So when we do things in life, if we don't have the hope for it, then it won't happen. And so hope, faith, hope, and love, it all ties in together. And like the Bible says, the greatest of these is love. Amen. I certainly agree with that. So now, do you find yourself normally writing in journals? How do you keep up with your writings and your thoughts? How does that process look? Um, I have tablets upon tablets upon tablets of thoughts. Um, sometimes I can be at work and um, a thought can come to me. I jot it down, start writing. I could be driving a car, a uh, thought comes to me and you know I have to remember it or sometimes I'll speak it into my phone. Um, a lot of the times I'm watching TV and while I'm watching TV, something will be said and just that word or that phrase that said, literally, I can take it and like the Holy Spirit allows me to turn it into a message, turn it into a, a word of encouragement. You know, I absolutely love that. The reason why that is so important is because I believe that when God gives us what I call downloads, he's not obligated to re-download it to us. <laughs> and oftentimes I've had where I've had thoughts, I've had ideas yes. and I thought, okay, I'm going to get back to that. And then later on, I could not remember it. And yes. so obviously, you know, I would kind of take some time and pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh God, please <laughs> let me remember what this thought was. But oftentimes I believe the Lord has given us messages and yes. we have to be ready yes. to share them. And I believe this is why a lot of people have writer's block, Brenda, is because they're getting messages, but there are too many distractions or they're not focused enough to receive the messages. What do you think about that? I believe it. Life can throw us so many curves and so many distractions. And if we don't take the time out just to be still for a moment, then we are going to miss that opportunity. We're going to miss that word that we need to write. And so when, when the distractions in life come upon us, we need to always have a time just to sit still. No matter how big the issue may be in our lives, no matter how, how deep the hurt may be, the pain, the sorrow, the loneliness, every day we should have a moment in our lives where we can just sit and not say anything and, and just let the peace of God surpass us. Just let it come upon us to where we can be able to meditate on any word that he's given us. And, and, and I think from that, we'll be able to flow and function in what we're called to do. Yes, I absolutely love that. I love that. You know, it's interesting because this is so good and what you're giving is so good and I really want us to flow but I don't know what's going on. Um, there's some folks over here that just can't hear us, but then there are some who can. And so this is a this is pretty interesting because normally we, we have it where everybody can or everybody can't, not where there's half and half. So if you all could just kind of type in, for those of you all who can definitely hear me, uh, just let us know that you can hear us and then uh, for the others, I'm not for certain uh, what's going on, but if you all would log out of Facebook and maybe come back on, I believe I may have seen someone who said that they did do that. Um, other than that, I'm hoping uh, that, uh, let's see here. Brenda, can you, do you know how to access your Facebook page? Let me ask you this. And guys, we're going to just kind of work out some tech technology issues here. I'm wondering a couple of things, and I don't know if this, this would affect them or not, 
Um, are are your friends Tashanda? Do you know Tashanda Tazino? Yes. And Tron Tron Brothers and Castillo yes. Colbert. Yes. Okay. So listen, this is what we're gonna do. I want you to open up your Facebook page, Brenda, because maybe it's on mute. Uh, we have it. Did did we do that earlier? So that might be a challenge if, okay. if that's on mute. Now you you can close the page back out, I think, and uh, still be able to uh, you know because you're coming through my broadcast. But if you log on and if you see this broadcast, let's press the uh, unmute button. Now, the interesting thing here, here is now Tania says she can hear now. She had to log on and come back in. Natalie can hear as well. Okay, Mary said you need to turn it off and come back in. And again, I'm not really that technical, techni te technically savvy. So um, Delan said he can hear us, that's my husband. But I'm thinking maybe my friends or people who are connected to me or accessing the broadcast directly from my timeline, maybe you can hear me. And then the some of the unfamiliar names, um, I was thinking maybe it's something going on with what I had Brenda do earlier. I don't think that should be it, but I'm just trying to give it a try here. So, um, did you did you go to the Facebook page, Brenda? We'll we'll give it a try. If not, they're gonna have to access access this from my page a little later. Okay, I did go to the Facebook page. Where your did Facebook I go? To? Uh huh. So now, if you're on your Facebook page, hmm, do you see the video and do you see a little microphone on the video, like a little mega kind of phone there, a picture of it? If not, we're, we're not going to worry about it. I think okay. we can. Can you hear now, Castile? Okay, Tashonda says she can hear now. So, okay, looks so like she they logged can... off. You're on back on. Yes. So now what I'm going to need you to do is go ahead and close that Facebook window out because I think it is affecting your, uh, it's impacting the, uh, the video uh, on your end, I believe. Because okay. it's coming in a little blurry now, and before we had a clear picture. So it looks like everybody's able to hear now. I hope we're good, guys. We're doing our best here. <laughs> All right, so let's get back going. So um, I love what you said, though, about just really sitting uh, still, and that's how we really can hear the voice of God, and that's how the flow can come. I have found that one of the major reasons why people are not able to write, especially those who want to write, but they're not able to write on a consistent basis is because they're just simply too distracted. And so we know what the scripture says, be still and know that I am God. And I believe that in that stillness is where we can get those downloads that will really, really not only be a blessing to us, but be a blessing to the lives of others. And so let's let's talk a little bit about um, you, Brenda, as it relates to when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer or you first felt that you know, I really have something to put uh, uh, on paper. Um, it goes back to when I was a child. I used to have this teddy bear and he was a brown teddy bear and I used to knit. And so I would take time to knit him outfits. Um, the first thing I knitted for him was a, a, a swimsuit, believe it or not. But I needed a story to go along with the teddy bear. So I started writing. And when I started writing, I realized that I love to write. But of course, being a young child, you know, nobody's there to help you develop the gifting of writing. And so it wasn't like I said until 2005 that I realized that I wanted to write, that this was a part of me and that I had something to say. Um, and after I lost the first book, um, I went through a bout of cancer. And while I was recovering in 2012, that's when the Holy Spirit um, gave me the unction to write again. And so every morning for 30 days, I would wake up and I would write. I would read a passage of scripture and I would write. And it wasn't until the end of that 30 days that the Holy Spirit said, this will be a book. You will put these writings together and this will be a book. And um 
from that point on, I, I just knew that I needed to write. I was able to release um, everything that God gives me through writing. And so writing is definitely a passion for me. I love it. I love it. And the whole story uh, with the teddy bear. So now, did you ever think about maybe, uh, I don't know if you can even recall it, publishing the story that went, went along with the teddy bear? I don't know if you guys know, but children's books are a very, very big thing. I never thought about it. I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> but no, I, I think I was so young at that time. I was just um, trying to have a companion. You know, uh, you know, when you're a child, you have your teddy bear and, you know, some girls, they'll do tea with their dolls. And I had a teddy bear that I need to say something to. So I wrote it in a story. Oh, that's wonderful. So now right now, how does your writing process look? Are you writing on a consistent basis? Do you write in journals? Uh, do you write morning, noon, night? When is the best time for you to write? Talk to us a little bit about that process. My process is... Um, I don't have a set time to write. It's, it's, it's just life is so busy between working and, and grandkids and, and family time. So whenever the Holy Spirit gives me that unction that it's time, but I am working on the last chapter of a second book that I've been writing. Um, I can't wait to for that one to come out. It's going to be very, very inspirational very encouraging. I believe that it's going to bring a lot of wisdom to, to, to things that we as people have thought was a negative. I believe that it's going to turn it around and people think positive about that. Now, when it comes down to writing for my blogs, for the blog topics that, that we get, um, it'll take me, the whole process can take me between four to five hours. Um, first, I have to pray and ask God, what does he want the people to know? What does he want the people to hear? After I pray, I spend some time just sitting and meditating. And then when the Holy Spirit says it's time to write, I write. I love it. I love it. Now, you know, one of the things that we're doing is for people who said that they are serious about writing. The reason why we have the timelines, that they have to work with the time zones, they have to write within a certain amount uh, of time that they're given to write on these subject matters, a certain amount of words, is because one of the things I found, Brenda, is people don't realize, but writing is a discipline art. It's a discipline <laughs> art. And so the more you become disciplined at it, the better you'll get. And so a lot of people think, oh, I can just write a book and I, I'm going to become the superstar bestseller tomorrow. And that's just not how it works. Uh, there's a discipline that's involved. It's a craft an art yes <laughs> so yes, how do you think doesn't... has this kind of helped you in your writing yes i absolutely love the blog <laughs> writing i get so excited when i'm sent the topic and and you know the last topic that we have i was like oh you know it's always so much that you can pull from from the bible and from life and i'm like okay god teach me how to put it together from the natural view and then from the spiritual view, because you will always have people that will read it that are not Christians. And so in writing, you know, Jesus said he came to seek and save the lost. And so if we're writing things, we're encouraging the saints, but we're also trying to reach those who are lost. We're, we're having a voice through our writing to reach the lost. And so I love the blog writing. I absolutely love it. It pushes me to my next level. And that's exactly what we were trying to do, even with the editing process. Uh, that can be very intimidating for people. And so we, we want our authors to understand, we want our writers to understand the number one, you do have a voice. You do have something to say. I believe that God has given everyone a story to tell. They just need someone to help them tell the story. And I believe everyone has some type of revelation or insight that they can share, but they just oftentimes need someone to help them and show them and coach them how to share it. And so one of the things that we've tried to do with the blog writers, and we're really trying to take it uh, slow and uh, not not be too, too intimidating here, but to get them to kind of see how the editing process works and that even though we get these downloads from the Holy Spirit, 
uh, I believe God is perfect, but I believe we're imperfect beings. And so he's filtering his revelation and his, his insight through imperfect beings. And so even though the word is perfect and the revelation might be perfect, when it comes through us, you know, there are some imperfections that are there. And so I have found that we've had challenges with people, uh, especially, uh, you know, a lot of believers sometimes uh, where they feel like, well, oh, I got this from God. Yes, you did. You know, you got the revelation and insight from him. But then we come along and we edit it in the sense that we, we, we have to understand that the people who are going to read this, they have to understand what you're saying. And so oftentimes because it's being filtered uh, through these vessels <laughs> that we are, uh, we just need someone to kind of help us, you know, bring our thoughts together. And so that's one of the reasons why we do it. And I absolutely love you and uh, some of the women that are on tonight, like Sonia and Tania and Natalie and Brenda, because you're so open to that editing process. One mm -hmm. of the things we learn mm -hmm. with writing is you write, and then you rewrite and you're yes. always right. Yes. Now, there is a point where you all have to understand that you have to just ship. In other words, there just comes a, a point in time where, OK, you say I've edited enough, I've written it enough. And now it's just time to just go ahead and put it out there. But one of the things we have to understand is for the most part, I have a saying and that is your first draft is never good enough. Okay. <laughs> yes. And so so uh, your first draft, you know, you get it out on paper, but then now there has to be some editing and some some you have to kind of process to make sure now the Holy Spirit has given it to you. But now how can you give it to other people? Because he uses your voice, your tone, the words that you're familiar with, the vocabulary that you're familiar with. But now you want to make sure that your audience can receive it, too. And that can kind of be, you know, a little a little challenging for some people to understand and receive. But the reality is, especially when you start writing for audiences and especially when you start publishing, you have to understand that now it's not just for you. It's no longer where you're just putting this in your journal and this is a blessing for you and it's it's lethargic and, and it is, it's, it's cathartic and it's, it's you know, it really bringing peace to you, but now you're putting it in the format where you really have to make sure that other people can understand it. And so I appreciate that openness that you have as it relates to that. So now you talked a little bit about your schedule and some of the things that uh, you have to kind of do uh, as it relates to uh, uh, making time for writing and just getting those downloads from the Holy Spirit. And just to even write a blog post, it takes about five hours. That lets us know the energy and time and discipline that we need to put into uh, this because we never know. You know, I sometimes access content from the Internet where I'm doing research and it might mm -hmm. be a post six years ago that somebody made Brenda and it just totally blesses my life. And so we want to yeah. make sure that we're putting out the best thing we can, but talk to us a little bit about where do you get your content and your information from your ideas to write? You kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier, but talk to us a little bit more about that. Um, a lot of my content comes from driving in the car, just driving in the car. And um, just hearing something or reading a sign or, you know, and just taking it in, in like, okay, this is this and I can do this and, and, and I can make this work from the natural part as well as the spiritual part. But take, for instance, um, the, the movie Moana. Um, there was one part of that movie that I watched and it literally struck me. And it was the ending part of the movie when she said, when she went to Tafiki and she said, you know who you are. This is not who you are when she put the heart back into him. And so that part right there, it helped me to really understand that nothing in life can define who I am because I know who I am. And so movies, you know, sometimes I'll just sit and listen at certain movies and, and certain things, but between driving and between watching movies, that's where I get most of, of my um, encouragement for writing and coupled with the Holy Spirit, of course. 
Very good, very good. And so you're really just kind of using things around you. It's interesting you said that when you're when you're driving, you get a lot of revelation. And so this is one of the things I want you all to understand on tonight is that the Holy Spirit often speaks to us uh, in 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 different ways, more so than uh, we might see uh, someone else uh, uh, being used or the Holy Spirit speaking to. For instance, I have a young lady who I know. She always gets her inspiration in the shower, and she said, not only is it in the shower, but when she hears water running, yes. it's like she gets inspired when she hears water running. Yes. Did you all get that? And so yes. sometimes uh, certain movements, certain yes. atmospheres, certain environments, I want you all to begin to pay attention to that because oftentimes that is your flow. That's where your flow is at. And so you want to put yourself in an environment that's conducive for you to write and for you to be able to flow with the downloads that you're receiving. So I don't know if you've ever heard of that before. Does that kind of sound yes, interesting? Yes, yes. And, and you know, I smiled and I laughed when you said it because that was a time when, when God would always speak to me through when I was running water, um, when water was running. Um, and, and like you said, we have to pay attention to every little thing. And so, even our dreams, our dreams can speak to us more than we ever know, you know, and, and, and some people call it deja vu. I don't think it's deja vu. I believe it's just a dream that you had that you didn't remember. And then when that moment came, then that, that was your time to remember that dream. And, and so we, we, we just have to listen and we have to be still enough and always be ready to receive a word. Always be ready to to be looking for the next thing. Okay, so I'm I'm done with this. So let me open myself up for for the next thing. Let me open myself up to hear the next word from the Lord. Let me open myself up to hear how I can encourage someone for this day. Or let me open myself up to hear how I can I can um apply this to my life this day. And so it is just that if we're always open, we'll be able to apply things to our lives more than we think we can. I love it. I love it. And so, yeah, I remember the first time I heard that, and this was years ago. And she said that about the whole water thing. And I thought, wow, I know I have a notepad next to my nightstand, you know, when I go to bed. And I said, I guess I'm going to have to put a notepad next to my shower. <laughs> and so you know, we have to be very conscious. We have to be very conscious because I believe yes. the Holy Spirit is always talking. The question is, is are we always listening? Now, a little birdie. Just, yeah, yeah. Listen, a little birdie just told me a few moments ago, Brenda, that you are a phenomenal minister. So talk to us about the ministry. Talk to us about that. And I want you to uh, send me your contact information via our chat here because I failed to get that from you. If there's any contact information you want us to share on the screen tonight. But let's talk about your ministry a little bit here because I'm sure I see it all in your blog post. You can see that ministry there. Yes, um, I have been um, a licensed minister since 2014. I was just recently ordained as an elder. Um, I, I believe that one of the greatest gifts and callings that God has placed on my life is, is to be in the office of the prophet. And, and a lot of my revelation comes from that office and from that place. But I, I love the work of the ministry. I don't like it for the title. I don't like it for the show. I don't like it for the accolades. I like it for the work. I am one who can be behind the scenes working and never want the, the, the limelight because I know that if I can just do what God wants me to do, then he's pleased. And if he's pleased with me, then everything else is okay. Yes. I love it. And such a humble, a humble spirit. I mean, I remember our first uh, call that we had with the blog writers about two months ago or so. And um, just, you know, hearing you ladies and just talking to you all and then seeing some of your writings, I'm thinking, wow, these women, these are such amazing women. Your spirits are just so awesome. And I could just 
see the love and compassion that you have for the things of God. And I'm telling you, these are the voices that need to be heard. These are the voices that we need to get out. I'm just getting like goose goosebumps <laughs> just even talking about this right now. I'm kind of teary-eyed because I'm like, you all are saying how much this is a blessing to you, but I'm thinking you guys are such a blessing to me. And when I read the post and the things that you're writing about, I'm like, oh, this is so amazing. And just to kind of remind you all a little bit about how this works. So generally, the the authors will get, uh, I'm sorry, the writers will get a, a theme that they have to write about. But this is based on a theme, whereas I've just started a series on that particular subject matter. And so I have all of my notes and content and information. So when their blog posts begin to come out, a lot of them don't realize it. But so much of what they're saying often are things that the Lord has already had me ministering about or they're touching on revelations and insight that God has given me. So it's like there's one Holy Spirit. And I see Prophetess Tracy on tonight. I think I saw her, Prophetess Tracy. And she always says, there ain't nothing but one Holy Ghost. It's just one Holy Ghost. <laughs> there she is. And so I just I just love it. And so they they they're over here kind of giving a lot of great comments here. Um Let's look at some of these comments before we go on to our next questions. Uh, Sonia said, thank you for the confirmation. I'm not for sure if we put that up already, but this is what Castile says. He says that his wife is inspired by water as well. I, I yeah. wonder how many of y'all over here, look, I got Periscope giving us some hearts. I need to show y'all some love. I'm sorry, Periscope. We got so much going on tonight over here on Facebook. <laughs> but listen, how many of y'all feel like the Lord uses you or you hear God's voice so you you feel a presence when you hear water and what are some other ways that you all really feel your downloads let's talk about that a little bit we want to get some feedback from our audience penny butler said thank you that was very good so something we said i guess a few moments ago <laughs> tania said come on now brenda you got an amen <laughs> corner on here tonight brenda <laughs> mary robert said amen that's good Sonia said, I love this. I love y'all over here on Periscope because y'all can't see the videos, but you all interact. I just love it. And Nakia Calhoun said, this is awesome. This is awesome. So listen, we're, we want to wait for y'all comments and we're going to be taking some questions a little later too. But uh, y'all put those comments up there. How do you think you normally receive your downloads from the Holy Spirit? Are you in a certain environment or atmosphere when that's taking place? Let us know about that. Now, let's talk a little bit about the obstacles, Brenda. So we 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 have these challenges sometimes, uh, what we call writer's block. What are some obstacles that you uh, feel that you've had when it comes to the writing process? Oh, so many obstacles. Um, <laughs> Life, right? <I> <laughs> So many. I can remember one obstacle since I started blog writing was um, the storm in Melda. And um, I had a the blog um, title that was due and I couldn't get it done because I was affected by Imelda. And, and so um, I tried not to let it distract me. And I had to come to a place where I had to say, OK, God, I, I got to be still. I have to um, get myself in a place to where I can concentrate on writing because when when things of that nature happen in your life, whether it's sickness, whether it's um, storms, whether it's um, death of a loved one, a friend, or even just so busy at work, you have to be able to get to a place. First of all, you have to be able to keep your commitment. You know, and, and when, when I agreed to be a blog writer, I made a commitment. And so obstacles come when 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 you're in your walking in your purpose and your destiny obstacles are going to come and they're going to come to distract you and they're going to come to take you off of course and sometimes you just have to steal away and say god forgive me for allowing these distractions to get the best of me. But now I'm ready to go for it in what you have me to do. And so that's what I did during that time um, of being distracted by Amelda. You know, I, I just said, God, I have to get a word out. This is the 
the season of my life that you've placed me in. And so I can't let a flood stop my progress. And so when you begin to think like that, when we begin to think like that, we become overcomers. We become more than conquerors. And we're able to do the things that are impossible. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. You didn't have to stop. I'm praising God. I love it. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. You know, I want to talk a little bit about that because I remember that um, uh, there was a situation going on uh, there. And I think uh, I want you to tell the story. Um, was it when was it around the time when one of the blocks was being released that you guys had another flood there? Yes. Uh, yes. And you stepped into you, you woke up that morning, stepped into just I want I want you to talk about that. But what you're saying is so good. And it's really blessing me because I've had to find that out and really overcome that issue with obstacles myself a couple of years ago, just it's been about two years ago. And many of you may have heard me tell the story. My cousin brother, and he is called my cousin brother because he's like my brother, because his mom, which is my aunt, raised me. And so he was younger than I was, and we were raised in the same house. He was murdered execution style. And mm. so this was a tremendous, a tremendous heartache and a uh, very traumatic situation uh, for our family, for me uh, personally. Uh, you know, your minister, you, 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 there's a lot that goes on in your mind when someone so yeah. close to you dies in such a way. And so with that particular situation, I, I found myself going through a period of just really slowing down to so much to the point where everything almost came to a standstill. Mm -hmm. And I really just within the last, I want to say six to nine months have been getting back on up, you know, on my feet uh, as it relates to my business, as it relates to the things God has called me to do. And one of the things that I realized is that me uh, going into that I want to want to say it was almost like a depression, but me going into that 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 place and space where I just allowed that to really put me back, uh, it didn't serve anyone at all. Yeah. Now it's one thing to have a break where you're 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 concentrating on you, but it's another thing to just lose your motivation and your inspiration because of life obstacles and that's what i was dealing with and so i want to encourage you that whatever it is god has called you to do again it's one thing for you to have a little sabbatical a little break to regroup but it's a whole other dynamic when you just begin to stop doing the things that god has called you to do and you lose your motivation and so i love it what brenda said um, you get to a point and you get to a place in life where you have to maintain your commitments. And so I just thought I'd just jump in there. I already told you, I'm just so excited. I'm getting so excited. I need to calm myself down. <laughs> I want Linda to talk to us a little bit about the situation that was going on with her. And you all know in Texas, they've had a lot of flooding. I, I believe I've never heard of Texas. I don't live in Texas, but you guys have flooded so much in the last five, six years. My goodness. Kind of tell us about that situation that happened, because uh, I do remember you talking a little bit about on one of our calls. Yes. Um, so it was a Thursday morning, you know, that Wednesday night, you know, I'm with my mom's in Beaumont. I was working in Beaumont for that week and I met my mom's and, you know, thinking that we're just going to wake up on another Thursday morning and um, just be normal. But the phone rung and it was about 510, 515 that morning. And it was my um, younger sister. And she said, hey, are y'all okay? And I said, yeah, we're fine. She said, are you sure? I said, yeah, we're fine. I'm, I'm on the couch. She said, just get up and see because it's flooding in, in certain areas. So when I got off the couch, I um, stepped onto the floor. And when I stepped onto the floor, it was water. And so I told my sister, I said, we're flooded. And she said, don't scare mama. She said, don't scare mama. And so, cause my mom is 74 and um, we didn't want her to panic or anything. And so I went and told my mom. And so water just, it just kept coming in very quickly. And it became a point to where I had to put help my mom climb onto the counter so that she wouldn't be in the flooded water. 
And so I'm sitting down at the table and I'm sitting in water because the water began to just gush through the door. And I told my mom, I said, you hear something? And it was the water just gushing through the door. And so I'm at the table and I just began crying and I just began to pray. And I said, God, I know this is not how you require our life. I said, me or my mom, we have not accomplished our purpose in the earth yet. And so we, but we you called for it? a boat. And the boat, the boat that we heard and the boat that came, we thought it was the boat that we called for, but it was not, it was um, another boat. But, you know, I ran through that water when I heard that boat and I said, we over here and I had the flashlight and everything, but it, through it all, we was in the water for a total of almost 12 hours, almost 12 hours. And it was something, I had anxiety attacks from it for about two weeks, two weeks. And I had to pull myself together. I had to pull myself together. I, I, I just had to pull myself together because no matter how many obstacles come, life still goes on. If you're alive, life still goes on. So I Amen. thank God that he um, didn't allow me and my mom to lose our lives through the flood. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that was a bit touchy and um, we appreciate you uh, sharing that because I believe someone that's listening to this broadcast or is going to listen to the replay, they need to hear that, you know what, obstacles are going to come, heartaches are going to come. But like you said, life still goes on. And so you still have to just kind of pick yourself back up and go ahead and do whatever it is that God is calling you to do. Isn't this good? You guys are over here commenting. You have some great comments. So let's get to some of these comments. So we have some responses and I don't want to miss any. So I'm going to scroll up. There are people that are responding uh, to our question about how do you get your downloads? Somebody over here, Charles said, a lot of times people don't understand what it means to be shaken to your core. You're right. You know, one of the things my grandmother used to tell me, uh, Brother Charles, is you know, you keep living, just keep living, just mm -hmm. keep living. And so what that meant was you hold on because life is going to show you. And um, so we just thank God that we do have God and we know that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. No matter what we go through. So listen, we got a couple of people here who are chiming in about where they get their inspiration from and i hope i don't miss anyone so let's go ahead and start with this one uh nakia says i get my downloads through worship yes 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 raise your hand if you get your download through worship raise your hand and put worship next to it <laughs> that's good that's a good one uh sonia said i get my downloads through prayer and dreams yes i get mine through prayer and I used to once upon a time dream, but I'm telling you, when I hit, when I hit the sack, I hit the sack. When my head <laughs> hits that, floor, <laughs> I know I still dream, but I'm, I'm not too conscious of, of too many dreams. Every now and then, I remember my dream. That's good, Sonia. So this is what Darlene says, and this is our evangelist, one of our evangelists. She's also a minister here. Just moved to Hawaii. Darlene, evangelist Darlene says water spiritually represents the holy spirit truth and cleansing yes i absolutely love that i love that and then we have pastor natalie on pastor natalie is one of our awesome blog writers as well we got some awesome people i'm telling you she says i get inspired after being awakened about three o'clock in the morning how many of you all have certain times where you just feel the holy spirit deals with you more than others so sometimes for people it's at a certain time where they really can hear the holy spirit and get those downloads pastor Natalie also says and in the middle of a conversation <laughs> <laughs> i think all of us ladies get downloads in the middle of conversations yes. especially when we're talking to our husbands right i know sometimes my husband's like wait a minute you know, let me finish my thought. So that's a good one. And so Tashanda, Tashanda says, some of my downloads come through the sound of running water as well. I love the saying, quote, it's only one Holy Ghost. All yes. right. So we yes. want to contribute that to Tracy. If Tracy, you're on. You hear that, Prophetess Tracy? Tashanda loves your saying. So this is some wonderful stuff. Let's see here. 
All right. So Tania says, speak the truth, Brenda. We get attacked when we step out. Rem Marie Moore, that's good. That's good, Brenda. All right. Okay. So here's one. Penny says, I get it when I sit still with no noise, no TV, just sitting quietly alone. Yeah, I think that's one of those good ones. That's a good one. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. And people are just chiming in. They love your testimony and uh, you really were a blessing to them and just sharing uh, your testimony. And so Sonia says 4 a.m. That's your time, Sonia? 4 a.m.? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I imagine the house is quiet. Not a lot of activity that is going on. Brenda, why don't you tell us, is there any way that uh, our audience can connect with you? We have a few more questions we want to get to before we close out. But is there any contact information? Certainly, we know you all can go to our kishnos.com page. And you can um, click on, you can scroll down there and you can scroll through our blog posts and you can see some of these awesome posts by Brenda and uh, many of the others, Minister Brenda, many of the other ones. I want you to uh, log on if you want to receive publishing information. I have free publishing resources. You can go to kishnotes.com forward slash publishing list and you can receive those free publishing resources. But is there any way that uh, you want them to maybe reach out to you via social media or any other platforms, Brenda? Yeah, well, they can reach out to me at um, through Facebook, Brenda Wells. The picture is Birth Through Affliction. It says it um, on the screen, which is the name of the ministry God birthed in me. Or they can contact me at faiththatheals46 at gmail.com. All right. Did you all get that? Can you repeat that again for us, Brenda? You can put that in the chat there. Did you put that? You may have already done it. Okay, yes. great. I got it. I got it. I'll make sure I put that up. Uh, okay. Oh, it won't let me copy and paste, but I'll put that up so they can okay. have that. But you can go ahead and repeat it one more time for us, and I'll make sure we we, we, we have that information on screen as well. Faith that heals 46 at gmail.com. All right, wonderful. So now you talked a little bit earlier about uh, some of the things you love your granddaughter, uh, you love uh, spending time, I think, with your family. Talk to us a little bit more, a little uh about what you like to do when you're not writing what are some of your favorite things to do when i'm not writing um yeah. sleep <laughs> <laughs> sleep as much of it as i can i don't i don't get much of that but um when i'm not writing i'll binge watch um hulu it used to be netflix but now it's hulu i like to oh. read I actually love to read. I love to read. Um, I can sit there and read. But lately, when I'm not writing, when I'm not doing anything, I've been stealing away and going to Beaumont when I have the chance. But I told them, I said, you won't see me home until Thanksgiving. So, um, but I, I don't do too much. I'm a pretty um, tonal vision and orderly type person. So my daily life is pretty much a routine. It's pretty much a routine. So, um that's that's pretty much what i like to do so <laughs> that's good that's good i love it and so this is how you can contact brenda again we have faith that heals 46 at gmail.com and then if you contact her on facebook you can see her brenda Wales there uh on facebook you can reach out to her send a message if you can't find her just send a shout out to me and i'll make sure i make the connection for you all as well. So listen, we're gonna be getting ready to wrap this up, but we wanna close out with any publishing questions you might have for me or any writing questions you might have for Brenda and we'll see if we can go to bat with them and I'll certainly help uh, out if uh, it's something, an uh, area that uh, Brenda is not familiar with. But one of the things I do wanna ask you, Brenda, is do you have any suggestions to help others become better writers uh, what's some things you want to kind of just leave with our audience on today? Be open to critique. Be don't, don't shut down when you're being critiqued. Always have an open mind. You, you, people are put in place and are gifted in certain areas to help. And, and so if we always feel like we know it all, 
We'll never open ourselves up to receive the help that God has put into our lives to help us. And so when we're going through the editing process or if we decide to give our work to a friend or or to someone else to read, be open to it and, and always know that it's not to harm you. It's to help you and to become a better writer. Oh, I love that. Brenda, I almost feel like I paid you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is one of the biggest challenges I have. Mm -hmm. And with believers, it's like once they get in their mind that this is, you know, what God said and this is how God wants it. And I don't doubt that God speaks to people and God gives people messages. Mm -hmm. But we've had some of our biggest challenges with people not being open to be critiqued. Yes. Oh my gosh. So someone on Periscope say, how can we develop the skill and will to, I believe it said write. How can we develop the skill and will to write? I love it. So one of the things that I tell people is you have to hollow out of time. You have to make time for it. You have to schedule it. You have to schedule it. And so, again, if you're not someone like a Brenda who gets these downloads and who's obedient to the Holy Spirit and who doesn't just allow distractions to totally take you away and you're having a challenge with writing, then you need to schedule it. And if you're really serious about it, you want to schedule it on a consistent basis. And so you need to take out your calendar and you need to say this day, this time, these days, these times I am going to sit and I'm going to write. So the first thing is you have to schedule it. And so uh, one of the things is you have to also plan the atmosphere and environment that you're going to be in. We talked a little bit about today about the different environments and the different things that really help our flow. And so find out what it is that help, helps your flow. You know, some people, they need total quiet all the time in order to receive their downloads or their inspiration. And then there are others who just like a Brenda or even myself, you know, you can get an idea from looking on a billboard as you're driving down the street, watching a movie, uh, listening to a television program. There are all kinds of ways. So whatever it is that you find is, 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 is the way that your inspiration comes, you need to hone it. You need to, to make sure that you, you, you don't dismiss it and listen to that inspiration when it comes. And so uh, another thing is you want to begin to journal, keep notebooks nearby. Mm -hmm. That will help you in your discipline and writing. So we have it where with our blog writers, uh, we are helping them become more disciplined writers by giving them a certain thing that they need to write about. There's a certain time that they have to get it in. And then there's a certain amount of words. In other words, you, you're not supposed to go over this certain amount of words. And what we're doing is we're trying to show them how to discipline themselves. These are like what we call writing prompts. And so you can create writing prompts from, for yourself as well. How can we find topic to write about? Well, one of the things you want to do is think about the theme that you hear uh, coming from your spirit most often. Often, A little earlier during the broadcast, one of the things Brenda talked about was how she had this book that was entitled Faith, Hope, and Love. And so I asked her the question, do you find that that's like your core message? And believe it or not, everybody has a core message. You can write books. You can write writings and publish things about all kinds of subjects. But at the end of the day, there's a core message that you have that you're always going back to. And so I would suggest to you is figure out what your core message is. And the more you begin to write and the more you begin to discipline yourself in writing, the more you'll find out what that core message is. Uh, you can join writing groups. There are a lot of free writing groups that are out there. I want you to go to kishnos.com and I want you to check out the free publishing resources that I have by signing up for my publishing list. Kishnos.com forward slash publishing list. So sometime next year, we are going to be doing some writing activities. Uh, if you get on my um, 
my list, you'll receive uh, messages from us throughout the week. You'll get at least two, two, two to three messages uh, on any given week. And there's publishing information. There's inspiration that's there. I suggest that you go ahead and support others who are writing. For instance, when our blog posts are released, go and make comments, share your thoughts, create you a gravatar. We have a link where you can create your picture and your gravatar to leave your comments. And who knows, your writing might get noticed by us. And we might be able to pick you up when we open up our blog writers again sometime in late spring. Oh, somebody just, oh, you posted a long message and I didn't get to see it. You said something about do readers require that you have certain credentials? Was that your question? As far as a PhD? No, absolutely not. Unless you're writing for some type of journal or periodical or some type of educational institution that has those requirements, at the end of the day, people are just looking to be inspired, you guys, and they don't care where that inspiration comes from. That's Do right. you hear me? That's right. People want to be inspired. People are looking for something to fill their souls, and unfortunately, they're finding the wrong things. But when we as believers can come forth and we can share the word of God and we can give them an inspired message, the word that lasts and stands forever, that is what's going to put meat on the bones of their lives. Yeah. So it doesn't matter about the credentials unless you're writing for some type of periodical, some type of journal, or educational institution for the most part if you have inspiring words and messages and thoughts to share that's where our editor comes in they'll make everything grammatically correct all right <laughs> listen i love you guys and i appreciate y'all for being on we've had some wonderful interaction you know brenda i think you're a little popular here <laughs> I'm not going to even tell our audience about your 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 Facebook situation here, but it looks like you're you're pretty popular, even though this is kind of a new new thing for you. Yes, um, yes. I'm just glad that you know they logged in and they were able to help and support. Um, believe it or not, they don't know that that means more than words could ever say to me. Just to know that they logged in to support and, and to listen, and and so. I feel honored. I feel encouraged. I feel blessed. I thank God for you, your publishing company. I thank God for your wealth of knowledge that you have in publishing and writing and for taking the time out to encourage and to undergird us as blog writers, you know, and to push us to becoming the best writers that we can be. So I thank God for you and I pray that he will continue to bless you and, and to place you into positions, into people's lives where you can bless others as well. Well, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Amen. Thank you so much. And listen, we want y'all again, reach out to Brenda. For those of you all from Periscope, and I see some folks have fallen off, but they get back on. So um, faith that heals 46 at gmail.com. And so make sure you send her a friend request. Uh, shout out to her on tonight. Let her know what a blessing she was for indeed. She was a blessing to me on tonight. Thank her for her time and her energy and her blog posts. And make sure that if you're on the publishing list, you all take some time. Go read the wonderful writings that our writers are making available for us. Be inspired by the words that they are sharing with us and make comments. Let's do unto others as we would have it done unto us. Let's show love. Let's let them know we support you. We thank you. We appreciate you. And what you have said matters. You know, people want to know that they're loved and they're appreciated. Amen. And so we want to show them, hey, listen, we thank you. And just as you all say you thank our company for what we're doing, uh, we appreciate you all and we love what you are, are doing uh, uh, for the people who are our audiences and who are looking at these blog posts. So we're going to go ahead because it looks like we are a little a little over time, about four minutes over time. Uh, we'll close it out with some last uh, uh, wonderful uh, accolades here. Natalie said, good news. <laughs> and listen, Tashonda said, we love her. I'm telling you, you have a fan club. You have a faith club. How about that? Amen. Amen. Great job. Great job. 
Yes. Castile Cover said, we are very proud of you, Elder Brenda, and we enjoy you, Pastor Kisha. Thank you so much. Thank awesome you. Job. Thank you, everybody. Job done well, Aunt Brenda, Mom, and I enjoyed you guys. So listen, I would love to close out in prayer. Um, I can do it or you can do it. Don't want to put you on the spot. What would you like to do, uh, Brenda? I want to close out in prayer. Okay. I, we can go ahead and bless the people. Um, yes. God, we thank you tonight. We honor you. We give glory to your name. We just yes. worship you tonight in all that we do, in all that we say, oh God. God, we come saying thank you tonight. Thank you for this opportunity, Father. Thank you for giving us the opportunity opportunity to speak to your people and to encourage your people tonight, oh God. Father God, as we all go on, I ask that you would bless Pastor Kissy, oh God. Bless her publishing company, Kish Knows, oh God, in a major way, oh God. God, I ask and pray that you would send forth investors, oh God, who will be able to pour into her life and into her business, oh God. Father God, I ask that you would raise up the right connections in this season of her life, oh God. Father God, I ask that you would cover her and her family with the blood of Jesus, cover her ministry with the blood of Jesus, oh God. I ask that your grace, oh God, would prevail over her life, oh God. God, I pray and I ask, oh God, that you would encompass her with your favor, oh God, for every listener, oh God, for every reader and, and everyone who joined in tonight, oh God. Bless them indeed, oh God. Enlarge their coast. Keep your hand upon them, oh God, so that no evil would come upon them, oh God. And we thank you tonight that all is well, oh God. We thank you that you hold us in the palm of your hand and Satan can't pluck us out, oh God. We ask that you would forever smile upon us and give us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for such a powerful prayer. After my closing remarks, we'll close out with some commercials. And then we just bid you all a very, very good night. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his counsel upon you and give you peace. Good night. Bye, Brenda. Good Thank night. you so good much. Good night. Thank you.